Okay, so the thing we always want to do right after we've sewn is we want to get off all of the extra strings. Here we go. And so we're going to get these off. And now the next thing we want to do, well, one thing we want to do right now is we want to clip these ends. Um, not Well, when I say ends, I mean these corners. Now, we don't want to clip in far enough to hit the seam, but we do want to cut those corners. We want to clip those corners because when we turn our pouch, it's going to help reduce the bulk. So here's the seam. We don't want to hit that, but we want to take off this little triangle right here. So we just want to take off that little triangle, and that's going to make a difference. And we're going to go over here. We're going to do this same thing over here. Don't want to go near the seam, but we do want to clip off that triangle a little bit. So just going to clip that triangle. All right, and now we're ready to, of course, press. Here's some more strings. I need to get rid of these. Oh. All right, so. Okay, so here we, ah, more strings. Hmm. Okay. All right, now, now we're going to press. Now, I don't know what type of marker you used. It doesn't really matter because your marker is going to be inside. It's not going to be seen. My marker disappears with heat, which is a really good thing, except I do need, we do need these two marks right here, these two lines. We're not done with them yet. So if they should disappear, while we're pressing, we're going to remark those marks because we're going to need those. Okay, so right now though, we're just going to press all around. And look, my marks are just disappearing. They're just like magic, they're gone. <laughs> okay, so I don't want those to disappear, so I'm going to try to press around as much as I can. I don't know if I can avoid it though. And so on this side, I'm going to press, press, I'm going to press along the top. And the main thing I want to do right now, because this is going to make our pouch look really, really special and beautiful and wonderful and professional, is we want to open the seams and we want to press the seams down first with our fingers. Just press the seam open. Then we're going to take our iron. And when the seam is really, really flat, we want a flat seam here. We're going to take our iron and we're going to press down on it. Okay, just press on it. Okay. All right, and we're going to do the same all around. Okay, my iron was not totally heated. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to do the bottom here. Now, in future posts, I am going to address uh, the um, topic of fraying ends, things to do so that they won't fray. For this project, it seemed that it was our first, and I might be dealing with people who are new to sewing or haven't sewn for a long time. I wanted to just go ahead and get the project done. I didn't want to convolute it with too many new ideas at once, but we are going to address the ends, what, how to deal with the ends so they look a little nicer and that they don't fray. Okay, so we're going to press that. And so we're going to go ahead and we're going to open this seam. We're going to open it and press back with, press it down with our fingers. And we want it to be flat, flat open. All right, we're going to take our iron to help us keep everything smooth, but we want those seams flat, flat. Let's see. We want those seams open and flat. So we're going to go like that. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. So keep those seams open. And now we're going to do it the opposite way. We really want to get those seams open, open, open. All right, so maybe a little hot, but we're going to go ahead, flatten it out. We want it flat. We want to open the seams until this is flat. We want it to lay flat. We're going to take our urn, press, okay, and press. Press and press. Okay, very beautiful. All right, and now we're going to do the same for the bottom, going this way this time. So we're going to open the seam, press it open with our fingers, get it to lay flat. Flat, flat, flat. We're going to take the iron, press and press, and we're pressing that seam open and flat. Okay? And we're going to do the same for this one one more time. Again, we're going to fold it this way, open that seam, and we're going to press it flat. Press, press it flat. So we're going to take our iron and we want it to be flat. Flat, flat, and flat. Okay? All right, now that we have done that, whoo, fabric is so hot. <laughs> now that we've done that, we really do need these uh, lines back. So we're going to, I'm going to go here. Yours may still be there depending on what you use. I'm going to go over here to the side, go over here to this side, and I'm going to try to recreate this line here. All right, so we're going to recreate this line. And then I'm going to recreate this line. Okay. I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to recreate the lines on the other side. Okay. All right, we're going to recreate this line, and then we're going to recreate the top line. So the idea is that we're going to fold this in on itself, and we want this little lip right here to be on or just hide that last um, bottom line that we have that we marked across the, all right, so that little line right there, we want this lip to just be on it and hiding it. Okay, so the first place that we're going to pin this down, we're going to pin it down, is we want to match the seams. We want to come to the seams and we want the seams to be open like they are. And we're going to take this top lip and go just so that we're hiding that mark that we put down there. So we're going to match only the, not only do we want the seams to be open, but we want the seams to match in that, the, at that seam that's coming right there, we want it to be in line with the seam that's up here. So in other words, we don't want it to be like this where we have a seam coming, but there's no seam up here. We want it to be a perfect match and we want it to be on top of that bottom mark line. So we're going to match this side up and we're going to put a pin in there. And then we're going to match the other side up. So the, we want the seam open and we want to fold it down. We want to come just to that mark, cover that mark that line, and we want these seams to line up, okay? So I'm going to put a pin in there, and then I'm going to put a few pins around the top just to hold it in place until we get to the sewing machine, because what we're going to do is we're going to go to the sewing machine and we're going to sew around here and attach this down 
like this. So we're going to make a seam around there. So we're going to put some pins to just help us hold it in place until we have we can do that. All right. So we don't need a lot of pins, I don't think, just some pins to hold it down. All right. So now we have this. This is what our pouch looks like so far. We're going to go to the sewing machine and we're going to sew this down. Okay? So, let's go. When we're sewing something like this, something that's in a circle, like a sleeve or like this pouch, one of the things that makes it really easy to sew is on most sewing machines, you have what is called a free arm. And the free arm is usually hidden in here somewhere. And if you remove the box that your accessories are usually in, then that frees up the free arm. And the free arm is slim enough that we can actually put this around the free arm and how it helps us is that now we're able to sew in a complete circle because this fits on the free arm and we can just go around in a circle. So that's what we're going to do. If you happen to have a machine that does not have a free arm, then the way you would sew this is you would put it underneath, let's see, underneath the presser foot, and you would, of course, start at the seams. We always want to start where a seam is sewing. And your main, the, the thing that you would have to be very mindful of is to make sure that the bottom isn't getting caught. You just, as you sew, you just have to make sure that you're not catching that bottom layer that is under there. Okay, but we're going to use the free arm right now. And we're always going to start when you're sewing you always want to try to start where a seam is or in a seam. So we're going to start right here on this side seam. We're going to put our presser foot down and we also want to kind of make a mark. Now we, a good way to mark this is just to kind of guide yourself with that seam that is already there. Actually, I want to be just below that seam, just a little bit, just the hair if we can. So I'm going to put my press foot down and I'm going to be just the hair below that original um, line. Okay, and we're going to go very slowly and we're just going to sew around here just the hair underneath the original line that we sewed when we first turned over that little lip so we're going to just be below that and we're just going to go and we're going to go and again just go slowly go at your own pace if you can go faster you feel like you're you want to do fast do fast <laughs> i'm just going to go ahead and continue along slow let me get some of these pins out of here Right, and I'm going to continue slow. And so you just watch your needle and watch your fabric. Look out for your guide. Always find something to help guide you. All right, so now I'm going to take this out and we're already on the other side already. We need to go all the back, all the way back to where we started. Okay, if we just go slow, our seam is going to be straighter and we won't fall off into the ditch. this pin and we're coming back near the end all right so what we want to do 
is we now want to get ready to go uh, find our reverse and reverse and go forward we're good we're gonna disengage okay so we're back from the sewing machine so the first thing we do is look for any threads that need to be cut are there any in here yes there's some here and we're going to just cut these threads and then of course we got our iron heating heating up because after we sew we iron all right so before we turn it we're going to just press <laughs> that just press i just just press <laughs> just press you can press your seams but just press and we don't want this to be flat square like that but but we do want to press the top so just go in and just kind of press in the center here and here but we don't want to square off the ends because we want our top to be round okay and so this is this is it all right now what we're going to do is we're going to turn our pouch inside out all right and as we turn you're going to feel for your corners and you want to try to make sure your corners are pretty square in there you're going to put your finger in the next corner as you turn it and so we got this corner over here and so that's why we had cut off those triangles because we didn't want to have all a lot of bulk in these corners now there is a tool that you can use to help push your corners out we'll talk about that in another post okay so here you have it here is the pouch now the only thing left to do for this drawstring pouch is to give it a drawstring all right so we can use a cord or a ribbon so now you're going to want to get your safety pin and your ribbon okay so I'm going to at the expense oh I'm going to use this ribbon instead all right, so I'm going to take my ribbon. It does, <laughs> it's going to be unique. I think it'll work. I think it's going to be cute. It's not really the colors, but it's interesting. Okay, so I'm going to take my ribbon, and what you want to do is you're going to have about an inch of your ribbon off the pouch, and then about an inch over here off, and you're going to do this three times. You're going to hold that, and you're just going to go one, and then you're going to go back two, and then you're going to go back three. Okay, did you see what I did? I'm going to do that again. It just helps to kind of, um, depending on the size of the pouch, then the, the, I have found that the drawstring is already always right when you measure it like this. So we're going to take about an inch of our ribbon and leave it off the edge. And we have about an inch over here. And we're going to do this count three times. So it's going to be one. And you're going to match it up over here and then you're going to go two and match it up over here and then you're going to go three and then you're going to cut it all right and then you're going to take the piece that you have after that and you're going to cut this in half okay so we're going to cut this in half and all right now that we have our ribbon and it's cut we're going to get our safety pin so where is your safety pin all right <laughs> i have this huge safety pin well okay here's one i'll go with this one okay this is better okay so get your safety pin all right and now what we're going to do is we're going to take one end of one of the ribbons and you're going to kind of weave the pin in and out of the ribbon on the end so that you have something that looks like that. And then 
I'm going to close the ribbon. And now we're going to take this ribbon and we're going to find one of those holes. Now these are the holes. Remember when we had those no sew zones? These are the holes that are the result of the no sew zones. All right, so you're going to take your ribbon and you're going to thread it through one of the holes. You're just going to start on any side. Just put the safety pin in and you can feel that safety pin and you're going to pull it through like that. And so you're just going to pull that safety pin through. And you're going to come to the other opening, but you're not going to stop there. You're going to keep going. Just pass it by because you want to come out of the same opening that you went into. So here you go. And now here we go. We're out. Okay. So that's one of the drawstrings. And then we're going to take the safety pin out and we're going to make a little knot here. Okay. And I want to try to keep it near the end. Okay, but that is our string. All right, now we're going to do the exact same thing going in the other opening. So we're going to take our straight pin, weave it into the ribbon. All right, so you have something that looks like that. And then you're going to take this, you're going to put it in the other opening. And we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to go around. We're going to let that safety pin guide us. And we're going to slide that safety pin. We're going to get to this opening and we're going to cross it over. We're going to cross over that. We don't want to come out that opening. We want to go out the one that we came in. And so here you go. And where's the safety pin? There it is. And now we're just going to pull that like that and we're going to take the safety pin out and we're going to tie a knot. And this is our drawstring bag and by pulling on these ribbons you can cinch up your bag is very practical. It can be used to hold a, a lot of different items or be a gift bag itself. So there you have it, our drawstring pouch.